Hello, Joe Neville here, back with another Python and REST API video. This is number four in this series, and in this one we are going to do a GET from my home network. So in the previous videos we did GETs from single devices. Now we're going to expand our horizons and do GETs from multiple devices of different hardware types. Here's the objective. To get data from multiple Aruba OS switch devices, and then we're going to do something with that data rather than just view it. Why are we going to do that? Well, the benefits of using an API over, say, the CLI are much more apparent at scale. With the CLI, you have to log into each one of the devices, issue your show commands, etc. With an API, we just run some Python code and then grab that information directly from the devices. Thus, it's a lot quicker, especially if you've got a number of devices. Now, if you're still unsure why using an API over a CLI has its benefits, this isn't just about viewing the data. As we've seen in the previous videos, what we did is we just printed the information that we got from the devices to the screen. Although you can do that and it is useful, the real benefits come when you take the data and then you do something else with it, they, that you do something programmatic with it. So in terms of Python, essentially what we're doing is we are taking the data and we're creating Python objects that can then be utilized by other programs. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can take the information and do and write it into a separate script, so completely separate from Python. Okay, here's the kit. So I've got my trusty 2930F switch, which I used in the other videos, running code 1603. Then I've got a couple of 3810Ms, which are running different versions of code, so 1603 and 1602. The reason being will become apparent shortly. We also have the Python work environment that I mentioned before, which is should be running on Windows, Linux or uh, Mac. Details in the first video of this series about how to set that up. So here is a network diagram that I've put together of my new network. There you can see my Fedora box is dot seventy and they're all on the same subnet that one nine two one six eight one dot zero slash twenty four so that's my home wireless network and I've added into that the twenty nine thirty F has got dot twenty nine thirty eight tens are dot two one eight and dot 219. Again, please note 3810M-1 is running a different version of code, so it's running 1602 rather than 1603. Let's jump right into the demo then. Here is a terminal on my Fedora box and I've got behind it there, I've got PyCharm running, which I'm doing my scripts in. First of all, let's check that we can ping everything in the network. Great, and we can. Okay, so we are ready to run our first script. I will step you through what's going on here. Okay, so the aim of this script, I've, I've split it up into different parts. So first of all, we're, we're going to print out at uh, this early point so you can see what's going on here. First of all, we are using requests as always for our HTTP library within Python. I've also imported pretty print, which you'll see why in a moment. Okay, here is a list which I have called tin and that's got a list of it, these are strings of the IP addresses of my devices. There we have .29, .218, .219. Then I create another list called, which I've called wrong code. Okay, next up we've got a for loop. And essentially what we're doing with that is that we are going to iterate over the tin list. So for IP in tin, we're going to create our URL. So this is the URL that we're using for this exercise. I'm using a different one here. What I want to do is I want to get the status of the devices. So this is a new URL which I haven't used before. Essentially it grabs different information which I will show you. And what we're doing is we're looping over this list and we are creating 
for each one of these IP addresses, we are putting that into the URL. Then we are sending a request get to the URL. Also note, I've added a timeout in there so that if it doesn't get a response within two seconds, then it will bomb out. And I'm creating this Python object. So get status underscore response is our response from this request get and there I pause to I'm going to pretty print that out so what we should get is the we should loop round using these IP addresses in turn and we will print out the JSON responses from the devices but as you can see we are moving from a single device to multiple devices So it's get underscore status dot py that I'm going to use. And there we are. So these are the responses. This is one set, then another. So it's curly brackets. So remember, that's a Python dictionary. We've got three devices which are all accessible and these are the three dictionaries that were created as we iterated over our tin list. Okay, now if you look at the information that's in there, it's slightly different from what we've seen before. So we've got some useful things here as part of our key value pairs within these dictionaries. So we've got firmware version. So the value for this key of firmware version for the 2930F is WC1603 there. We've also got hardware revision, so that's the actual part number. We've got the name, so all obviously very useful to have the name. Product model and serial number. So make sure total memory and bytes. So quite a, a random piece of information, I think, thrown in there in the status, um, in my opinion. Okay, and what we have is that we have these dictionaries and these key value pairs for each one of our devices. So if we move on, the on to the next one, you've got the firmware version, KB1602. So remember that must be, and there we are, there's the name, 3810-1. And finally there we've got the final device, our other 3810M, and that's running 1603. There we go, 3810 Dash two, So that's the information. What we want to do then is we want to grab that information and do something with it. That's what this is all about. It's not just about looking at it on the screen. It's actually like churning, processing this information. Okay, so as an example, what I have done then, I'll move on. That pretty print we don't need anymore, so I'll just comment that out. And lower down here, what I've done is I've already written out um, an example of what we can do. So I'll just bring this up, essentially uncommenting that out. Okay, so we are going to take that get underscore status response, the JSON of that, and we're gonna, going to create an object, this G status because it's a, the dictionary and I'm going to print so this is a simple I've done the uh, I've shown you this uh, previously so this is a simple print of host name image and serial number so these are things that I've just shown you from that dictionary so these are key value pairs in the dictionaries that we've seen so you can see here that the format command that I'm using I am calling that on the G status dictionary and I want the key name and then the value of the name will be added here then the firmware version will go against image that will go there and then the serial number will go there okay I'll comment out the rest for now and I'll just run that so the three quotation marks that does, um, I've got the three quotation marks there and the three quotation marks there if you're wondering. So that will comment the, that further code out until we use it in the next stage. 
I'll just show you what this print is going to look like, first of all. Run this to the end, and there you can see, because I was, I've, I've used tabs in there, um, so that backslash T, giving the tab, so everything's very nicely aligned for us. There we've got the host name, the image, and uh, I just used some extra information that I thought may be useful. So I've grabbed the serial number as well. Okay, that's fine. But as I keep mentioning, this isn't really what we're looking for because at the moment we're still using our eyeballs to actually scan down and see, for example, the host name and the image that was running. But the whole point of this is that we can take the data and then we can run some logic against it. We can treat it programmatically so we can use the code to do the work for us for example we can use it to pick out whether there's any devices that are not running the version of code that we expect so imagine if you're an operations team and you've got a whole estate of devices and you want to run a check to see if they're all running the latest version of code 1603 you can just run some code against this grab the data objects from your network via the api and then run an if statement over the object, so over the data. And that's exactly what I'm doing with the rest of this code. So we'll uncomment that, take that out. So this will now be active. What I've done then, so we've got the for loop and then I've run an if statement. It's just a string that it's looking for. So 16.03. So the if statement will be looking for that statement. If that is not in the dictionary firmware version, then we add the name of that device to wrong code. So we're going to append that to wrong code. Now remember, wrong code is a list that I have started up here. Remember square brackets for list. So essentially, we grab the information from the devices, create the G status underscore dict, then we run, we are printing that out still, then we run an if statement for this string, if that's not in there against the firmware dictionary, take the name and add it to the wrong code lead. So, uh, wrong code list so append that to the list so we'll end up with a list called wrong code of the device names that have not got 1603 as their firmware version then I finish that off with a print so just a print of a string so it looks nice list of devices with wrong code and then I've created this print statement, which will essentially create a nice looking printout of wrong code. OK, let's run this then. Start again up here. OK. Get status. Right. There you go. That's our printout from before. And this is our new list. So list of devices with wrong code. 3810 dash one this is just a small example you can imagine if you had a list of a hundred devices all running with different versions of code or and you wanted to check which ones didn't have 1603 then using this approach you could easily get hold of a list of the devices that weren't running the code that you expected for example so i hope you can see some of the benefits of using the api and approaching the network and network management in a programmatic way. Okay, what next then? Well, this script here has a number of sections to it, but if you were going to create big flat scripts like this, then things could easily get out of hand because you know, if you think about it, I've got my list up here, then I've got another list, then I've got a for loop, and I've got an if statement, a couple of print statements. The whole thing about code and Python is the modularity is key to designing good workable code. So what I've done is I've taken this a step further, and I've created a function for get status. 
and that I have included here. Okay, so I'll step you through this. We've got a couple of inputs. Now, the the thing with this is that we are stepping forward in the complexity of the Python and your knowledge that you would need to be able to recreate this. This series isn't specifically about teaching the Python concepts, so forgive me if you don't exactly understand what's going on here. I do intend to create a video series specifically for networkers that would focus on these Python skills. But for now, it's more about showing you what you can do with the APIs. Okay, so what we have here is similar setup as before. I've got a list called list of tin, which contains strings of the usual suspects IP addresses. And here is our function. So I've Define a function, so def meaning define. Here's our function called g underscore status, so get status, and it takes an argument of tin underscore list. Now, when we run this function, it creates a list called wrong code, so there's an empty list there, square brackets, runs a for loop, so for ip in tin underscore list creating the URL so it's very similar as before so it will loop over this tin list creating the URL for a, that will run against system dash status then we create the get status response and we create the dictionary from the JSON of the get status response that comes back from the switches. We do the print again, which is exactly as before, and I've included that if statement for the 1603. If it's not in the dictionary as before, then we're going to append it to the wrong code. So when we run that on the CLI, we'll see, on the Linux CLI, we'll see this for loop will create for x in wrong code. I'm going to print out each one of the ones that are in the wrong code list. So if it, thus if a device doesn't have 1603 as its code, it will be printed on the screen for us as we run the Python. But I've also taken it a step further to try to show you that you can do more with this rather than just print things to the screen. So there, here's another if statement. What I've got here is if wrong code, so when we finish this for loop, if wrong code is not empty, then we are going to create a file here in the directory that we run the Python script in, and it's called wrong underscore code dot txt. In the next line, we are going to write, and I've just got an opening line there about the following switches are non-compliant, then new line there. And we are going to loop over the list of the wrong code, and we're going to write that. Then we're going to close this file off. So as you can see, with this, we're taking it a step further. So we're not just printing to the, to the Linux shell when we run the code we're not we are printing we, we are going to print the list of the devices but that's not all we're also going to do take it a step further and we're going to create a wrong code text file which has a list of these so obviously then you could do other things with that text file you can then send that on to someone so it's it's auto automating an extra process i hope you can appreciate that you know i'm just trying to show different things that you can do with this code to finish up then what I've got here I've got another function called main and when we run main so essentially what we do is we take g status and we run g status using the list of tin so if you're not sure what's going on here I wouldn't worry too much essentially what's happening here is this function when that's run it will run our other function our g status and it will run it using the argument of list of tid so we're going to take that list pump that into g status and run this code here against 
the list of 10 list up here. Okay, let's run our updated get status then. I've also brought up the graphical view of the directory that we're in and we will see the wrong underscore code dot txt created in this directory. That's our updated file. Okay, let's run that. Okay, warning. Wrong code running on 3810-1. Here's the file that we've created. Let's open that up. Attention humanoid, the following switches are non-compliant. There we go. There's our 3810-1 in there. Okay, so there we have it. We have moved on from doing gets from a single device to the multiple devices in my home lab. Plus, we have taken it a step further from the most basic get and then print of data to actually applying some logic, some if statements to check whether our devices are running the correct version of code. As I'm sure you can appreciate, this very much is just the start of things and is just the first steps into a whole new world of network automation. Please do like or dislike, depending on how you're feeling. Leave me a comment, especially if you didn't like it, please do leave me a comment and tell me what you would like to see and do subscribe to the channel. That's it from me. I'm Joe Neville. Thanks for watching and goodbye.